so this is a module on optical networks now. So until now through the course we have learned um, the ingredients of a point to point link. Let us say you are trying to establish an optical communication link. Uh, we now know how to pick our transmitter, how to choose our receiver. We, can, we now know what are the distances uh, that the signal can be transported. Uh, we know how to do the performance evaluation of the link in terms of the quality factor, in terms of the signal to noise ratio, in terms of bit error rates and so on. Uh, but in general, uh, transmission system, when we talk about a transmission uh, system, uh, it uh, refers to uh, this transmitter, receiver and the channel. So when we talk about a communication network, uh, the communication needs to be established not just between two points. Um, there could be multiple users uh, which are involved. Uh, there could be uh, uh, these users could be geographically located in different uh, locations and the type of services that each of these users are demanding could be different. Some of them could be wanting to transfer data, some of them could be wanting to transfer voice, um, some of them could be transferring video and so on. Right. So. Uh, Communication network refers to this interconnection between uh, different users. Uh, these uh, would uh, involve now talking about some set of rules that needs to get established so that uh, different users can access this uh, communication network in a standardized manner. Uh, so this is how the uh, scenario of an optical uh, network uh, look like. So, and the far end at near the user, you would be having, uh, for instance, uh, people at home using broadband services, internet services or the uh, television uh, information, the cable TV that uh, comes into your home. So, you could have people uh, talking on their uh, user equipment here and the uh, data all the way up to the tower is in the free space modulated in the RF carrier depending on what kind of uh, service people are using. But beyond a point it goes, uh, uh, the, the data gets converted into the uh, optical domain. You could also have another bunch of users which are more like uh, users of uh, data centers. Uh, these are huge servers which store uh, the different information in the likes of uh, own cloud or uh, you know Google servers or you know Amazon servers and so on. Uh, those of them would need interconnection between each other and they would also need to connect to the main link because um, somebody from this uh, cell phone would want to probably access the data which is kept in a data center network. So you would need to establish a path like this. And depending on the, uh, the geography of uh, the connectivity, you could be going through what is called as a metro network, which is an aggregation of a lot of what are called as the access networks. So this last mile networks are called as the access networks. You could be making this connectivity to a metro network and uh, there could be like a terrestrial uh, bigger uh, metro network and depending on where you want to do the connectivity you may be establishing you may be wanting to establish a connectivity with another continent in which case your data has to find its way to the nearest submarine landing station uh, find its way through the submarine cabling system get back to the submarine landing station of the continent to which you are communicating and find its way through the metro network to the uh, access uh, network like this, right? So uh, this is how the landscape of an optical communication looks like. So at different levels, the way the network is uh, established is, or the way the network is constructed is slightly different. So in this uh, part of the course, we are going to talk uh, about how the different topologies are um, uh, built. So in this part of the course, we will deal with uh, what are the different network topologies at different levels? Um, how exactly this uh, does this link uh, get established? And what are the different standards that are currently uh, used? This is of course very fast evolving. So you have to really keep up with the standards uh, by keeping up with the standard documents. Uh, a quick question, 90% uh, of the optical network, uh, the fiber is in uh, 
which part of the network take a guess is it in the access is it in the metro is it in the core so uh, turns out that even though the core uh, network which is the uh, network that connects multiple different uh, continents or very large distances the distances are very large so you tend to think that the uh, amount of fiber used in that is the largest uh, but turns out that the number of users in the access networks are really really large and turns out that the amount of fiber you are deploying in the access network which is the last mile connectivity between the user to your metro or um, to your core network that is probably the highest and that is ever increasing. Um, so the topics to be discussed in optical networks, we will, as I said earlier, uh, we will talk about different topologies. We will also look at different categories, which is uh, the long haul, metro, access and data centers. We will also use, uh, talk about certain specific terminologies which are used uh, just in optical networks and not in any other communication network, which is a passive optical network network. Uh, PON networks or GPON networks, which is uh, gigabit passive optical networks and the fiber to the home uh, scenario. Uh, we will also talk about optical interconnects, which are basically connections between two servers or between two boards of the same server and the data center interconnects. And we will discuss a bit uh, briefly about uh, front hauling in the wireless communication systems. So the first topic is optical network topologies. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, communication network uh, in general talks about the connectivity between different users. And the goal of the communication network is to establish a very seamless connectivity between a uh, uh, sender and the receiver. And what are the desirable properties? You would like to have a connectivity established for large number of users so you do not have to lay physical networks multiple times. If the same network can take care of uh, connecting multiple users, that is what uh, is an ideal situation. Uh, it should be efficient, it should be flexible in uh, using the resources in the sense that the same uh, fiber for instance uh, should be able to carry data from multiple different users so that the entire bandwidth uh, available uh, in the fiber can be completely utilized. Uh, while you are sharing uh, these resources between different users, uh, the network should also take care that uh, the, there is no probability of the probability of jamming is really, really low. Um, the blocking probability is really low, which means that from point A to point B, if I want to establish a link, the network should not come back and tell me that, look, this uh, road is completely chock a block, your traffic is completely chock a block, you try to establish the communication later. That is not acceptable. Similarly, each user would require a large capacity. So, you would, uh, for example, a user is trying to download a video, uh, he should be able to download it really, really fast. And you would want this, uh, which means that the resources should be uh, adjusted in such a way that if the user is, uh, for instance, uh, demanding a very high bandwidth uh, uh, requirement, for example, he is downloading a video, whereas another user is just making a telephone call, the uh, resources that are available to the first user should be uh, prioritized to be higher than the second user because a telephone call, the latency that uh, is allowed is uh, way larger than the latency available for uh, maybe a, a, a live streaming of a video. Right? And uh, last but not the least, your uh, reliability of the link should be really, really high. It is not just necessary that you provide high speed connectivity. Uh, between the links, you should have that high speed connectivity all the time, it should be reliable. Now, the additional complication is that the people who are uh, developing these networks, who are physically digging the road and laying the fiber optic cable or uh, uh, designing the submarine uh, uh, network, they are a set of uh, companies, there are only actually three or four companies who are capable of actually laying and ma uh, maintaining a submarine network. Of course, terrestrial networks, there are multiple set of people. Uh, they are different. The network operators are different. So once these 
a group of people who lay the network finish laying, uh, they lease it out to network operators. So, the network operators get a part of the network. For example, if it is a fiber link, they actually get only a part of the bandwidth offered by the same physical fiber uh, for their op operation. So, multiple network operator could be actually using the same uh, physical fiber for their communication. Uh, these network operators are now using different equipments and these equipments are made by vendors who are uh, completely another set of people and of course users are different right so uh, the same user could actually be using different devices i could be using an ipad i could be using a, a, a laptop i could be using a television so i could be having different equipments uh, used to connect to the same network. So, given that there is this wide range of uh, disparity in, uh, uh, you know, in terms of people who are building the networks to the people who are actual uh, users, um, you should also remember there is one more additional complexity that the different users could be in different geographical locations. Um, so, to uh, have an illustration, let us say uh, we talk about uh, uh, Let us say you have user A, user B in a different log, uh, ge geographical uh, location. This is just an abstraction, uh, four different users. Uh, these users could get connected to different nodes. So, these are nodes let us say are connected to each other this way and each of this user it could be the uh, laptop of a user or it could be the connection to the home of a given user. Now, let us say user uh, let us say user A wants to communicate with uh, user uh, B for instance. So, the possible ways of doing that is connectivity can go from here, uh, it could go from uh, through 4 and he could go through the node 3 and the signal could get dropped at B. But in case that uh, network resource is already utilized through because of some other connectivity that is already happening. What could also happen is all that the user A can get connected to uh, from 1 to 2 to uh, 3 and so on. Uh, so, the, the point is that the information that is uh, to be trans, the information that needs to be transported from user A to user B could be just a voice, okay? it could be just a conversation. But you cannot send that conversation as it is through this node. So, it has to be translated into a form which is understood by the network. So, your information needs to be converted into formats that are understood by the network and the information should, uh, the network should select the optimal path to reach your uh, second user. Uh, the network, uh, how do you, how does the network do that? So, there must be some network uh, management uh, system, uh, NMS, which decides which should be the path taken by this uh, signal. There could be routing algorithms which say that, okay, if this has to go from this point to this point, uh, so there is a geographical path and there is also this logical path. So, it has to follow the logical path such that the logic, lo the geographical path, the geographical path need not be the minimum distance, but logically it has to reach the user B with minimum logical uh, distance. Um, so, in this context, there are two types of switching that happen. Uh, one is called as uh, circuit switching, where uh, at uh, uh, this is, uh, by the way, whatever we are discussing is true in general for any communication network. It is not just specific to optical communication network. So, uh, what is uh, circuit switching? Uh, in this uh, method, what happens is, um, let us say user, uh, the information needs to be transported from user A to B. Uh, the first thing that will happen is the path gets established. 
right so the path gets whether it is a green path or the blue path that is shown here it gets uh, established and once the path is established that path is left dedicated to the uh, transfer of information from a and b right so uh, in circuit switching the route is once the route is established it is available for the pair of users uh, and it is available without interruption right so that is uh, circuit switching uh, whereas the other way of doing is uh, transporting information is uh, packet switching well the disadvantage of the advantage of circuit switching is it's very reliable right the path is already there disadvantage is that you know the the entire path the bandwidth may not be used entirely by uh, this uh, particular users there could be some time slots or uh, uh, where this um, the uh, the network is available for somebody else to use so it is not a very optimal way of using uh, the network so the alternate way of doing uh, transferring information is uh, packet switching so in packet switching what happens is uh, whatever is the information that needs to be transferred from a to b gets uh, slotted as different uh, packets in time so so you have packet 1 packet 2 packet 3 and so on each packet in the beginning of the packet you will have something called as a header information which has information about what is a source what is a destination what is a bandwidth uh, which sequence is this uh, packet appearing and so on okay so what happens in uh, packet switching is that um, so in packet switching the information is now uh, compartmentalized into different time slots and each packet is unique in terms of its source address, destination address and uh, so on and uh, the user sends packet by packet. The information, the network processes the information packet by packet. It first sees the first packet and finds out what is the optimal path for that first packet, sends that packet. Then it tries to handle the second packet. So at that instant of time, maybe the path, the green path uh, is probably busy. So it will probably route the second packet through the other path. The third packet may be routed through a third path. And finally, in the destination, um, there is some uh, ab abstraction, some layer in the networking or some functionality in the network, which actually assembles all these packets in the, uh, they synchronize in time. And then it goes on to the user for interpretation, right? So this is uh, packet switching. Um, the most commonly used method in optical communication is still circuit switching, uh, although there are um, uh, implementations of packet switching also happening. Okay, um, so so the the point uh, to be made here is that uh, uh, how these nodes, uh, how this network. Uh, how this network handles this data transfer from user A to user B in two completely different geographical location. It has to pass through maybe multiple such uh, nodes. And as we said earlier, people who laid the network are different. The vendors are, uh, the equipment vendors are different. The network operator, the people who work with the network management system is different. So what is important is uh, standardization. Okay. There is some amount of set of rules that needs to be laid and needs to be followed by everybody in the chain, right from the equipment manufacturer to the people who are uh, deploying the networks, such that uh, everybody understands the same uh, language, everybody follows the same rule. It's like traffic lights in uh, roads. So everybody knows that you need to stop when you see a red sign. Everybody say, needs to uh, wait for the green signal so that they can start moving. Similarly, a set of rules need to be laid and this set of rules uh, help to manage an optical uh, network, any communication network. So uh, the most commonly uh, used uh, way of standardization is uh, the open system interconnect OSI reference model. Uh, they guide the vendors and the uh, developers. Uh, they uh, different vendors can interoperate uh, different products, the different network management software, all of that can interoperate because all of them will comply to this uh, same standard. So these standard uh, facilitates a very clear framework which uh, uh, describes the different functions in, uh, uh, of the network in a telecom system. 
And the way this standardization is done is such that uh, the network functionalities are divided into different uh, layers. A detailed communication network course will tell you what is the uh, philosophy between different layering, but we will just do a quick recap so that we can see uh, how exactly optical communication fits in and what is the difference uh, in the optical communication uh, network. 